What is up you guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Mackenzie. If you're not new, thank you for coming back. So, you saw the title of the video. Today, we are making a stand-up light tracing box. So, any of you guys out there might want to make one of these. You don't necessarily have to be a stained glass artist, probably just an artist in general, and having something like this is super handy. So, I didn't want to buy one online. I figured we should be able to tackle this together pretty easily. So I made this design as simple as possible. I didn't add even any angled cuts. We're doing butt up against butt for wood. So if you guys don't have any woodworking experience too, you don't have to be intimidated by a project like this. It's going to be super quick and easy. Hopefully I'm a little nervous, but still really excited. So as you can see, I've already picked up all the supplies behind me. I picked up absolutely everything at Home Depot. So I will link everything in the description box down below, but we're also going to go through everything one piece at a time so we're gonna go through everything one piece at a time so I can show you what it is what it's gonna do but also how much it's gonna cost so you guys know what to anticipate if you're wanting to make something like this too I will tell you it's definitely affordable for what it is if you're comparing it to having somebody make one for you or buying it online so like I said we're making these stand-up light tracing box so if that sounds like something you're into let's just get started Alrighty guys, so let's just quickly go over everything that I've picked up and everything you're going to need if you want to make this too. So let's start with the most important pieces. That is the wood in our acrylic sheet. So the wood, you're going to need two 12 foot two by fours. So again, that is two 12 foot long two by fours. As you can see, I've already got them cut up a little bit. I'll explain that a little bit later. Next most important thing is going to be the acrylic sheet. So I'm going to link the one I got below, but I'm also going to link the one I wanted to get. So I wanted to get this exact size in the pre-frosted version. They didn't have that in stock, so I had to get one that was crystal clear and make it frosted myself. I'll tell you guys how I did that in a second, but this is an 18 inch by 24 inch acrylic sheet. So the reason you want it to be frosted is because if it's completely clear and see-through, it's not going to diffuse and bounce the light like you need it to, to make it an actual tracing box. If it's crystal clear, the light is going to just come right through it and it's not going to do what a light tracing box does. You need it to have a very frosted white looking base to get it to bounce that light off and be able to use the entire space for tracing. So if you can only find a clear one, this is what you're gonna do. You're also going to pick up a can of Rust-Oleum or any brand frosted glass spray paint and you're gonna need a little bit of white acrylic paint as well. So. This was crystal clear yesterday. What I did was spray painted the frosted glass one coat all over it and let it completely dry. You can't see what this is gonna look like until it's completely dry. It almost doesn't look like it's doing anything, but then all of a sudden it's dry and looks very, very frosted. So I did one coat of this, let it dry, did another coat of this, let that completely dry. Then I watered down some white acrylic paint. So I did it about 50, 50, 50% 50 paint, 50% water, and I just essentially did a white wash. So a very, very light coat of white watered down paint on top of both layers of frosted glass. And that gave us the exact look we're going for. So you can see here, that's exactly what we're looking for. Again, this is an 18 by 24 inch piece of acrylic. If you're going to size up, I would definitely suggest sizing up the thickness of this as well. So this was a 0 0.093 inch thickness. If you're going to make a much larger table, I would definitely go up to probably quarter inch thick of the acrylic sheet because you don't want it to flex as you're trying to draw on it. But because this is pretty small, it's only 18 by 24 inch, I just got a pretty thin one and it was pretty cheap. I think it was, well, yeah, 15 bucks for this. I paid another $5 for that spray paint, but hopefully you guys will have the already frosted version in stock. If not, now you know what to do. So next most important is the light. So there's a reason I picked these specifically. So I've got one of these light bars in my office closet right here. I've got one in my pantry, one in my fireplace, one in my upstairs closets. I love these things. And that's why I don't mind paying 22 bucks a piece for them. So when I started figuring out how I wanted to make this table, I knew I didn't want any wiring. I didn't want any cords. I didn't want to have to plug this thing in. I want it to be completely free floating, no ugly cords. That's why I chose these. So these are battery operated lights. They come with a cord to charge them. They have three different settings. They last a long time and you attach them by 3M sticky magnets. If you've got these things completely charged, 
and you run it at the brightest setting, it'll still last three and a half to four and a half hours. If you have it on the mid-level setting, it'll last seven to eight hours. If you have it on the lowest setting, it'll last 32 to 33 hours. You guys don't have to pick up these exact light bars. You guys could even wire um, those sticky LED strips as long as it's bright enough. So again, both of them was $44 for the pair. All right, so let's talk about all the other little things. So I picked up wood screws. I've already got two inch wood screws, two and a half inch wood screws. I wanted to pick up three inch, so I just got this 25 pack of three inch wood screws. I've already got some wood glue at home. You're gonna need your mask for when we're cutting the wood, your safety glasses. I've got my measuring tape right here. I've got a sanding block. I might use my orbital sander too as well. I'm not sure yet. I've got some wood stain right here. I'm not going to count this in the final cost just because this is optional. And I might even not use this wood stain. I might just paint it straight up black. You guys know me and I know me. But I wanted to try to use the gray if I felt like it. If not, I'm just gonna paint it black. And then we've got our tools. So of course you're going to need a drill and a circular saw. Like I said, I've got four pieces right here and I made the mistake of trusting Home Depot to cut one of my 12 foot two by fours into four even pieces of three feet because I want my table to be just about three feet tall. So each one of the legs is going to be three feet long. Not only did they cut them at angles, they didn't cut them at exactly three feet. So I'm going to have to trim these anyway, but for the sake of the video, we're just going to say you're going to have four three foot legs. They can cut that pretty easy. And then I'll tell you what the sides are going to be as well. They can cut that pretty easy as well. So if you don't want to use something like a saw, or if you don't have one, you can have Home Depot cut it. Just make sure they know that it needs to be cut exactly where you say it needs to be cut. So most important thing is the wood, the acrylic sheet, our light bars, our screws, your frosted glass if you end up needing it, if you guys can't get the pre-frosted version of your acrylic sheet. So we're looking at right about $100. So $100 and a little bit of elbow grease and you'll have your own awesome handmade, homemade stand-up light tracing box, which is super, super cool. And depending on how you want to finish it, paint it is going to be totally up to you guys. So I think we're just about ready to get started. We should start cutting up this wood so we can start putting this thing together and decorating it, the fun part. So let's get started. All right, you guys. So like I said, I made the mistake of letting Home Depot cut these up for me. So I'm going to take them down just a little bit, but I want you guys to make yours really at whatever height you're comfortable with. These are the legs, so this part's totally up to you. I know I wanted my legs at three feet. But because I didn't get what I wanted when I asked them to cut them at three feet, I'm gonna to have to trim them all. So I'm gonna take them down to 35 and a half inches. So a half inch under three feet. So I'm going to mark everywhere I need at 35 and a half inches. And we're going to recut these nice and straight. So we've got our legs cut. I definitely need a new saw blade, but I don't quite feel like changing it right now. So let's just quickly get our actual table cut. So like I said, I've got four legs on our table. Each of those is gonna be three feet. Of course, I had to trim mine because Home Depot messed mine up. Now let's make the casing for the acrylic to sit on top of. So. I've got a little sketch right here. Our acrylic piece is 18 inches by 24 inches. And like I said, we're gonna do butt to butt. We're not gonna be cutting any angles. So that means we're gonna need two pieces of 24 inches long. And then we're gonna need two pieces of 15 inches long. So really quick if you don't know why. So we've got an 18 inch by 24 piece of acrylic. We've got wood that has an inch and a half thickness. So we're gonna do 24 long on each side. Then we're gonna do 15 on the short sides. So 15 plus three, because that's one and a half inches, one and a half inches of thickness on each side. So 18 minus three is 15. So we're gonna need two 15 pieces, two 24 pieces. Does that make sense? So same thing. We're gonna measure 24 inches, 24 inches, and two 15. All 
All right, guys, I totally just realized I completely forgot to wear my mask. You need to wear some type of particulate respirator mask if you're gonna be using a saw like that. Even though I was only cutting a couple pieces, it still does create a ton of wood dust. So, my bad, I definitely should have been wearing a mask and you should too. So, anyway, we've got all of our pieces cut now. Now, our acrylic sheet is going to sit right on top just like that. Easy peasy, yeah? So, next thing we gotta do is drill our pilot holes for our wood screws, cause those bad boys are big. That's absolutely going to split your wood. I mean, pretty much anything does. So, let's get that ready and start putting this bad boy together. Maybe I'll put you guys in an overhead frame. Meh, I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so, now, like I said, we gotta make our little pilot holes to drill our wood screws through. So we wanna make the pilot hole a little bit smaller than the screw, that way the wood doesn't crack. And we're also going to coat these joints in wood glue just because we're not doing any ink hold cut or anything, we're just doing butt against butt. So I'm also gonna add some um, wood glue in, but I'm gonna drill two pilot holes for each joint. So for each joint, I want two. So I'm gonna hold it right where I need it to be being cautious, very cautious of where my fingers are. And I'm going to gently drill a couple holes through each joint. Then we can go in and put our screws in. Cool. Nice guys, so we've already got our top frame. Super, super easy. So all we have to do now is attach our four legs to this, put our acrylic piece on top, and we're golden. What do you know guys, look who it is. Editing Mackenzie is here. Okay, so really quickly, I just wanted to explain something. So like I said in the thumbnail of this video, mistakes were made and for some reason, at this point in the process, my mind just like stopped working. I don't know what it was. So when I originally designed this in my head, I knew I wanted the legs on the inside of the frame table up against the um, corners like it should be. But when I got to that point, for some reason, it was like my brain couldn't compute that I just needed to flip the legs to the other side to avoid the huge overkill three inch wood screws that I had put in. It was like, so here's the corner and I had attached it with wood screws right here, right? So I'm like, shit, if I wanna put the leg up against it here, I can't get more screws in, I'm gonna hit the other ones. Not realizing I just flipped the leg to the other side and screw it in. But for some reason, my mind just couldn't make that connection. I don't know why. So for whatever reason, I just decided to put the legs up on top of it, which was a mistake and I end up correcting it but I just wanted to explain that before you guys see that footage and probably have a freak out like, oh my God, what is she doing? But I made way more work for myself than I needed to. I ended up having to make a brace because sitting those legs on top of the frame versus in it made it a whole lot less stable. So you guys will see all of that, but just wanted to explain it first. So enjoy the rest of the video. All right, guys, let's try this again. So now we're gonna put these legs on the right way now that I had my aha moment. So this is where we want the legs to sit. And I knew this before, but for some reason I was having like a mental block. So that's what we're gonna do now. We are going to put the legs on the right way the strong way. Same exact thing here guys, but again, we're gonna do it the right way. So I'm gonna drill my little pilot holes and put the screws right through. And this time, I don't care. I'm gonna use these basic two and a half inches and that's gonna be fine. We're gonna do two screws for each leg. Bada bing.
All right, this is how it's supposed to look. <laughs> Like I said, that's what I wanted to do originally in the first place, but for some reason my mind just couldn't compute it once I started building it, which is super weird, but we're on the right track now. Much more sturdy, a lot stronger, and we're almost done. So now we're actually at the point where we can sand it and start painting it, but before I do that, I've got to get some shuffling done outside. So I'm gonna clean my mess up put this project on pause probably until later tonight when I get bored or tomorrow morning. So I'll see you guys in a second. Good morning guys. So I've already got a second coat on all four of the legs. So all I've got to do now is flip it over and do our first, second, and maybe third coat on the top of the frame. And once we finish painting it and letting it dry, we're ready to mount the acrylic table on the top or the acrylic piece on top and then we're going to be done. All we have to do is just mount the lights, screw the table in, and this thing is finished. I'm so excited. So I'm going to try to hurry up, get this painted nice and quick. I'm just going to flip it on its side and finish painting everything with one, two, maybe three coats in the areas that need it. But we're almost done. Home stretch. Okay guys, so we have our piece completely painted and the last thing we gotta do is put our acrylic piece on top and then mount the lights, which is super, super simple. So I think what I'm gonna do is just drill a couple pilot holes into the acrylic and then I'm just going to tack nail it in place with these little tack nails, they're little like one inch, little simple tack nails. So I think I'm going to, like I said, just pre-drill through the acrylic because I don't know if this would crack or not. So I just feel better about trying to pre-drill the holes at least into that. And then we're just going to hammer it in place. Look at this, you guys. We are almost done. I'm so excited. So the last thing we gotta do is mount our lights underneath the table and see what it looks like. So... Okay, so we've got our two light bars out, and like I mentioned earlier, I already have these in a few places around my house, so I know how it works. It's pretty simple. You just get these little tiny 3M sticky magnets, and you can stick them anywhere you want to mount your light. I'm going to mount them on each top and bottom. I'm not going to do the sides. I'm gonna to do top and bottom. That way the light bars are closest to where I'm going to be tracing. I'm most likely not going to be tracing on the edges of the table, most likely in the middle. So I'm gonna do that right now. So I'm gonna plug these lights in. I'm going to mount the little sticky 3M tabs. I'm gonna make sure these lights are charged all the way up. Then I will show you guys the final reveal of this tracing table. I'm so excited. Alrighty guys, so we are officially done with our stand-up light tracing table. It's super hard to get on camera because the way that this top acrylic piece kind of blows out the light and reflects it over the whole thing, it just doesn't pick up on camera. It looks like it's just two very concentrated lights on the side, which you can see in person, but it definitely diffuses a lot more throughout it in person. Okay, so I'm super stoked. I was not sure if I was going to be able to do this. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I just didn't want to ask for help for a couple reasons. 
So number one, sometimes I just want to do something on my own and learn myself how to do it. And number two, if I could do it on my own completely, that means you guys can too. I didn't want to ask for help from a professional like my dad or my father-in-law. So it's just more feasible. If I can get this done completely on my own, you guys can too, and I love that. So again, I'm super happy with how it came out. It's sturdy, it looks good, it works really well. I cannot wait to actually use it. So on that note, I gotta go. I wanna make some new designs because why not? I gotta wash this paint off of my face. So as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you did, comment down below, let me know what do you wanna see next, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh yeah, lesson learned, don't rush.